Hello! I hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, this is the first time I've tried a streaming, so I'm not convinced that it's working right, but uh, I'm sure you'll let me know if it's not. Anyway, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get going. So this is the scene that I'm going to be building over the next couple of uh, episodes. Um, the picture on the left is the reference image, and the, the one on the right is the one I've put together. Um, the main things we'll be focusing on are the, the modelling, which is relatively simple, really. <laughs> um, some rather cool techniques for lighting. Uh, the lighting in this scene is actually using three separate HDRs coming in from different angles and giving us the uh, relatively closely matched lighting to the reference image. Um, and then the focus beyond that will be on how to get decent effects out of glass in Blender because the, the, the default glass shader isn't particularly great. Um, there's a lot of it, a lot of fakery going on in this image, but uh, it's quite controllable and uh, I think pretty good. We've got some fake caustics going on uh, in the shadow there, um, and this kind of refractive light, these light beams coming down um, from the reflection that's faked as well, um, uh, as well as some just sort of general stuff. I, I was going to include dispersion in the glass, but it was slowing down render time so much that I've decided to omit that. Um, but yeah, I suppose, good time to get started. So, let's jump over to a nice fresh blender. I'm going to turn this to full screen, so I've got no other distractions going on. And then delete everything. Now, I'm targeting this at kind of the intermediate end of beginner stage sort of person um, so if you're quite a bit beyond that then apologies if I'm going into too much detail but uh, yeah so first thing I'm going to do is press shift A I'm going to go to the image and load in a reference image because we're going to start by modeling the pint glass I'm going to use that one uh, let's jump to front view I'm just going to rotate that around so the reference image is pointing where we want it and yeah, let's start with a circle. Uh, we've got 32 vertices, which is probably overkill, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it on that, why not? Press tab to jump into edit mode, and then I'm just gonna scale this up a little bit, and then make sure that this reference is lined up properly, which is not. You'll see that there's a bit more of a gap on the left there, so let's just grab this reference image. Bring it a little bit this way, a little bit more, yeah, that should be about right for us. And then from edit mode, let's start extruding and shaping out this glass. So hit E to extrude, you can press Z to lock it to the Z axis, that will keep everything nice and neat and tidy, and then just scale it in by pressing S, and repeat that step several times. Ooh, hello. Until you start to shape out the glass. Now we're going to be using a subsurf modifier and we'll be able to alter the look afterwards. So we don't have to go into too much detail now. Just want to make sure it's roughly right. And yeah, something like that should just about do. And for the bottom, I'm just gonna extrude in a couple of times. And then for the final one, I'm gonna hit S and then naught. So scaling right to the middle. And depending on how it looks, I might merge those vertices, but I'll leave that for now. All right, jumping back to front view, let's start moving our way up the top. Extruding, more extruding. This is thrilling entertainment, I'm sure. More extruding. Now, this line I want to make sure catches the curve or the peak of the curve there. Otherwise, we'll lose that shape, which we don't want to do. And then just start extruding and extruding. Awesome. To about there. We'll sort out the lip in a minute. One thing I do want to do though is try and make sure we've got a relatively even balance of uh, uh, of, of geometry for the subsurf modifier. So let's uh, select this loop, press 
G twice and then we can slide it and I can add in another one there I'm going to add in two loop cuts there in case you don't know that's control R and then you can use the middle mouse wheel to decide how many you want and yeah that's not too bad awesome All right let's see how that's starting to look with the subsurf so I'm going to add that put it up to two right mouse button on it and hit smooth shading let's go back into edit mode hold down Z to jump to wireframe and now we can just make sure that this is kind of behaving and you can see how the subsurface behaving uh, behind the actual vertices which is quite handy I want to bring that out a bit at both of these just try and get that glass shape good now with some of these uh, now I'm just getting confused by my own reference image ignore me cool okay so let's add in a solidify modifier and increase the thickness so I'm going to go back to solid mode there now thickness wise it's important to try and get that right and I can't remember exactly what I used but a pint glass is not particularly thick so I'm going to go over about that as a value yeah and at this stage I'm going to get rid of I won't get rid of but move the, the reference image out of the way because the rest we can do pretty much just by looking at it Okay, so I'm going to move the subsurf up above the the uh, sorry the solidify above the subsurf and apply it. And now we need to make a few changes to the mesh itself. So let's jump into wireframe mode, and we want to select uh, that Ooh, hello that loop. It's kind of hard to see what ones we're grabbing. That one, and that one, and that one. And I want to move these up a little bit. I'm going to delete that edge loop actually. So let's get rid of that. And then, ooh, too many edges. And I've actually left the ones at the bottom there. That's fine, I'll fix that in a minute. So, what we're basically doing is creating this little lip area like so in fact what I will do just for now I'm going to put in a I've selected this uh, loop up the top in fact I'll select the inner one and then I'm going to mark that as a seam because now if I go to face select mode I can select I can press L on a single face no L no why aren't you working that should just select the ones on this side. How bizarre. Hmm. Okay. Going to be like that, is it? Okay. Well, just so we can see what we're doing in here, I'm going to hide this outer lot here. It's still selecting everything. That is annoying. If anyone knows why that's doing that, feel free to type because that would be handy. But yeah, let me just uh, select that, 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 all of that, and hide it, and that stuff. Yeah, we, we can see that well enough now. Cool. So let's select these edges and that pesky middle one, too, and now we can bring that up a little bit. And we want to keep this, if you notice, the glass kind of dips inwards, uh, where it's quite flat at the bottom, but on this uh, inner surface, there's a definite dip in there. So we want to keep that. So what we'll do is just, one at a time, deselect those and bring it down a little, and then we get our dip. Cool. Now I'm going to hide all of these. I think we do need to merge these vertices, because the subsurf isn't liking it. So let's grab that make sure I haven't got anything I shouldn't have hit all M and merge at center yeah that's made it happy and then we'll do the same with that line there merge at center it seems that there's a 
edge there, which we don't want. So let's delete that. Good. I wonder if that's why my L wasn't selecting properly. Nope. Still don't know what the scores on that. That's weird. Anyway, one thing I do want to do because we extruded out from a circle. Um, the normals could be quite ferocious at the moment. Ferocious, Her horrendous. I'm making up words, but no, we're looking good. Everything's blue. Happy days. And uh, yeah, we pretty much have our pint glass. I might thicken it up a little bit later, but um, basic modelling for the pint, the uh, pint glass is done. So let's jump over to uh, the. Let's bring in a camera. Cool. And what I want to do is make sure this camera is the same resolution as my reference photo. Because we're going to use that to line up the uh, the picture. So, it's actually quite a big one. Three, 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 three by five thousands. That's what we'll set our render to. I won't be rendering it at that, but yeah. Um, and then we'll bring in a camera and press control numpad zero. And you'll see now the camera's the... Uh, the same dimension as our reference. So let's bring in that reference as a background image. And that will allow us to position ourselves nicely. There we go. Cool. Now I can't share this picture, I'm afraid, because uh, it was a purchased one and I don't have the license for it and whatnot. I just want to start making sure I've got the right sort of look to this. I think it was using a focal length of about 35. Uh, yeah, close enough anyway. The way to judge it, or the way I find it easiest, is, is look at this kind of oval um, that the top of the, the glass is creating, and then try and match it roughly off that, as well as getting the angle right, obviously. And you can tell just from the picture that it's pretty much dead on, maybe slightly slanted down, but uh, yeah. Cool. Well, I think that's another thing we're going to need to do, which uh, literally just occurred to me, is adjust the scaling, because I modelled this just at the size that it came in. So this pint glass is currently many, many, many metres big. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll fix that in a minute. What I will do, though, is grab everything and move it up. So the origin point is at the bottom, because that's a good habit to get into. Um, and now we'll start work on the table. So yeah, let's add in a plane. And another thing I'll do actually is I'm going to split this and bring in uh, what am I looking for? Bring in our reference image. If it's already loaded, it should be there. Cool. Just so we can start to keep an eye on everything, make sure that we're doing what we need to be doing. Um, yeah, that should be about right. Now the way we're going to model the... Uh, we are going to model, it's not just a material we're putting, they're actually going to model in these planks. I'm going to do that now. Um, and just Cool. So by pressing Control R, I can drop in a loop, and I'm just going to roughly create some planks. Now, I, I did notice from looking at the picture that they're, they're not all even, which is, I guess, a bit odd, but uh, hey-ho. So, I'm just kind of roughly copying what's in the reference there. And then I'm going to hit Face, select everything, but before I extrude, I'm going to first change this to Individual Origins, and then I'm going to hit Alt-E instead of E, and then I can extrude Individual Faces. And that will basically extrude individual faces, funnily enough. Cool. And then what I can do after I've extruded them, uh, bring them down a little bit first of all, and I can scale along the Y axis, and that will just kind of get them to come in just a little bit, and they start to look like separated planks. Awesome. What we can do though is delete these edges, because we don't need them, and probably going to use micro displacement on the material and this will just confuse matters later so let's get rid of those get rid of the edges nice cool another thing I'm going to do is select the middle uh, edge there and press V to separate and I'm going to do that on all of them just so these are separate items 
and um, because that will allow us to do some fun stuff with the material later. When I get to that stage, I'll I'll come back and explain why I've done that. Um, but yeah, anyway, cool. So we have our uh, table and pint glass in place. What I'm going to do now is fix the scaling because I should have done that in the first place. But I'm a moron. So. I'm selecting both, but making sure that the glass is last so I can see what dimensions it is. And we want to make this basically 15 centimeters. So that's 0.15 we want, or thereabouts. And then it's a, a realistic size for a pint glass, if memory serves me. And I can just hit Control A and apply the scale. Cool. Now, because this item is quite small, um, one thing you'll commonly get is as you get too close to something, it starts clipping away like that in the viewport, which uh, makes editing really annoying. So to fix that, you can go to the view and just change the uh, the beginning clipping distance to 0.01 rather than 0.1. And then you won't have that issue as you zoom in. Um, I don't know if there's any downsides to that. I don't know why there has to be a starting clipping distance. I would assume there, I would assume there should or, or will need to be, but I don't know what it is. But yeah, let's get our camera and line this bad boy up again. And then we'll be actually about done with the modeling. It's like, it's really not much to do on this, which is awesome. We just wanna make sure it's roughly about right. Now I'm rotating it around because the table doesn't line up very well there. It's gonna be about this angle actually. Good one. Ooh. Yeah, I think that'll do us. I'll just move this along the x axis a bit, scale that along the x, and uh, yeah, that should about work for us. Uh, it's not perfect, but neither am I. Yeah, that'll be, uh, that'll be close enough anyway. I suspect. If it's not, we can always fix it. Cool. Right, so the next thing we're gonna do is, uh, we won't worry about the material on this um, just yet. I just wanna put a glass material on this and then start talking about the lighting because that's that's where, well, one of the things I wanted to focus on the most today because it's some funky stuff. So let's just jump over to rendered mode give this a really terribly basic glass material. Like so. Oh, horrendous. Cool. Um, and then I'm gonna get rid of this background image for now because we don't need that either. So, cool. We have our, our basic little scene here. So now I'm gonna jump over to the world view and we will start building up our lighting. So we're gonna start doing what you'd always do and just throw in a HDR. Yeah, so let's go to, uh, now what HDR did I use first? Now that's the question. <laughs> I think it was this chap, no. I've got three HDRs in here. Hmm. Or four, just to make it even more challenging. I believe it was this guy. No, it was that guy, I'm pretty sure. Nope. I apologize about this. I probably should have noted it. Okay, yeah, it was actually this garage one that I used first. So what I wanna do is just rotate this around don't worry about the background image or anything like that. We're just looking at the lighting. Uh, if anything, I'll turn it to transparent so we're not paying too much attention to that. And we just wanna get a good sort of general lighting. Preferably with the shadow over in this direction. We're gonna be creating a more harsh shadow manually um, using a an actual lamp. Um, but for now, I just wanna get the, the basic kind of lighting in there. Cool. So now I'm gonna duplicate these nodes 
and I'm going to bring in a second HDR, this fireplace one. And what I want this to do, I want the yellow or part of the yellow light to be catching this left hand side of the glass. So let's rotate this around until we get that. Yeah, it's actually pretty not bad. As is. Yeah, that should work well for us. But if we were to just mix these together, it's not going to quite work because if you've got one or the other, or if you do it in the middle, then you kind of have this mixed sort of washed out lighting. What we want to do is just take the the yellow highlight from that area. So what we're going to do is add in a gradient texture. Um, I need to bring back my transparency. Cool. So if I come out, we can see what the gradient texture is doing. Yeah. And as I rotate it around, it rotates around the the uh, the world, as it were. And if I were to then add in a color ramp, like so, I can make that area smaller. You're probably figuring out exactly what we're going to be doing now. We're going to be using that area to mix in the HDR. So if I mix that to there and take a look at what that's doing, we've now got this weird portal to a different HDR um, just in that area where the, where the gradient is. And that allows us, with a bit of tweaking anyway, to get the, the, the yellow lighting that we're after. And what we can also do is add in a another color mix, set it to multiply, add in a value node, and we can multiply this by about five, just to, to bring out the, uh, the value a bit. In fact, just, that reflection's annoying me, so I'm going to bring in a plane. Thank you. And just put it behind the camera, just so I'm not having to look at that, because that's irritating. Cool. Um, yeah, I haven't quite got that right then. Um, first we need to move it a little bit this way and we're just not getting the the brightest of highlights there so let's continue to play with this HDR oh that was about right yeah that's that kind of yellow that I want from it probably still some fiddling around to do um, but yeah that's definitely a good start um, and then I'm going to duplicate these nodes and that one and basically do the same again. So put that in there, create another one of those. You'll probably want to be a hell of a lot more neat and tidy than I am. In fact, my final one did have some nice neat frames and stuff, but no one wants to watch me neatening up frames, do they? So let me disconnect that for now, just so we're looking at what this one's doing. Good. So we want a different HDR in here, and it will be that lounge room one, because that's got some really nice white windows on the side. Um, but what we want to do is move our gradient to be pointing over there. I'm hitting the wrong one. Where's our gradient gone? There it is. So yeah, we want to rotate the gradient texture, oh, there it is, over to this side, and get these nice bright windows into the uh, reflection. You see how it's giving us that nice white line now? Also, that's what we want. Drag that in there. No. Oh, I'm confusing myself here. No, that's the multiply, isn't it? <laughs> Drag that one in there. There we go. Cool. So uh, I've still not quite quite got the the yellow reflecting right. I really want that to be on the edge of the glass. Um, but we'll tweak that a little later. One thing we are getting is a really nice bright shadow here, but I do want to slightly adjust it. Uh, that's really not helping. I've got the wrong one again, that's why. Idiot! Here we go. However, um, if we leave this like that, if we look at the uh, reference image again, it's nowhere near this bright. 
I'm literally using these additional lights just to just to catch the reflection so as we proceed with this what I'm probably going to do is limit those two HDRs to only affect the 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 glass itself rather than light the whole scene um, but we'll see how it goes Sorry about that, my uh, streaming software just came up to say my audio would cut out. Hopefully it's still okay though. Fingers crossed. Cool. So we've, we've made a start on the lighting. There's still going to be some, some tweaking that, that needs to be done. But I, I do just want to go over exactly what we're doing here because it was the kind of the key of the lesson. And I think I was kind of rushing through it uh, and not being particularly clear. So let's start labeling it and uh, making it sort of stand out make, make make the technique stand out a little more so we've got a basic HDR yeah and that's being mixed with another HDR this one um, which also has some controls for increasing the strength etc um, and it's being mixed by this gradient texture okay and then we're doing exactly the same down here we've got another HDR with a strength override which is being mixed into the final image or the final HDR by a different gradient texture which is uh, yeah quite an interesting method you do end up with a very bizarre looking HDR but <laughs> as long as you're hiding it um, then it doesn't really matter does it so yeah I think we'll call that our final, our final setup. Um, I'm still not sure about the. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna add in a light path node. I did want to reference my original scene before trying to recall exactly what I was doing here, but uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. So I put in a color mix node. I've set the uh, the secondary value to black in fact I think it'll be the other way around set the first one to black um, and now if we feed in is glossy ray I think what we should get is that's clearly not working is singular ray nope is reflection ray nope hmm transmission ray Okay, give me a second. <laughs> this looks so professional, doesn't it? I clearly know exactly what I'm doing. I don't have to go back and check what I did before. No. No siree. Singular ray. Multiply that by the singular ray. Okay, cool. Okie dokie. So I'm multiplying this by the singular ray. Cool. That's what I did. Okay, yeah, that works. So now you see I'm getting the reflection, that really harsh reflection. If I set that to zero, it will disappear um, from the HDR, but it's not lighting my scene. It's literally just applying to the glass, which is exactly what we want. This is the whole point of these other HDRs, which is, was to make the glass more interesting. Um, the rest of the lighting, I just want to come from the basic HDR. So we'll duplicate those nodes. And what is it? Is it all P? Yeah. Alt P breaks two nodes away from a frame, in case you don't know. I always forget that, it does my nothing. Um, cool, so we want to multiply that by that. And that does the same. Awesome! So now if we look at our image, not exactly physically accurate at this point, I would imagine, but uh, it did work really well in my finished image. You've, you've now got a lot of interesting reflections going on with the glass which is obviously important with glass, um, but you've still got control over the lighting separately for your scene. I've got some nice basic, simple lighting for my ground here, um, and all of this funky stuff is only applying to the glass. So yeah, hopefully that makes some sort of sense. 
got a question here. What's this? Uh, is there a reason using HDRs rather than using mesh lights? Very valid point because uh, that was my my first uh, train of thought was yeah, just throw in some mesh lights. The problem with glasses, especially glasses like this, it's got all these angles on it. If you start using mesh lights like a uh, simple area light. The reflections make it really, really obvious that that's what you're doing. Um, you could pos possibly go down the route of trying to make some more interesting, sort of shaped uh, emission planes, I suppose, and fake the lighting that way. Um, but then you're still dealing with the problem of it lighting the rest of the scene, uh, which I guess you could still go down the route of limiting the rays that it affects and whatnot. But I just found this method. Uh, when dealing with glass, it just it it automatically creates extra interest in the reflections. There's there's so much going on um, that yeah, I don't know. I, I I think it works. You might disagree, um, which is cool. You're more than welcome to. There's there is a right answer, I suppose. But uh, I I personally found this uh, this worked pretty well. So yeah, hope that answers your question. Um, cool. Right, let's um. How are we doing time-wise, anyway? Not bad, 35 minutes. Not bad. Okay, um, I'm going to go in and do the material for the uh, planks now, because that's nice and quick and easy. Again, I won't be able to share the textures involved, but I'm quite sure you're capable of finding some wood textures. Uh, these particular ones come from Polygon. Uh, no surprise, given that's where I work. Um, <laughs> so let's call this, I don't know, table, and bring in some images. Well, where are they? Scroll, scroll, scroll. Wood planks. If anyone wants the link to this particular texture, let me know and I'll be sure to post it in the comments. Um, but yeah, it's just a nice sort of simple wood plank sort of texture. Bring those in. Connect these up. Like so. Don't worry about the mapping. We'll uh, sort that in a minute. Linear. It's a gloss texture, so we want to invert it because that's how you make it a roughness, like so. And then linear on the normal map and bring in a normal map node and connect like so. There we go, material done. Cool. Um, yeah, we need to do some UV work, don't we? So let's. Uh, Tab into. I should, should be able to unwrap it. It should look alright, I would hope. Yeah, not bad. Cool. Um, let me just switch this over to the color texture. And. Yeah. Now this tiles, I uh, think, in both directions. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So we'll just. I'm just going to take this one step at a time, basically. Um, let's just grab that one first. And make sure it's only covering one plank. This one, two. I'm kind of concerned with the unwrapping though, because these this little side bits should be tiny compared to that. I know it's not a scaling issue, because we already applied the scale. Yeah, we'll see how it looks. It might need some tinkering there. But yeah, there were two reasons that I separated out the uh, areas. It was one to make this stage easier. You can just grab the UV separately. But also, as I've shown a moment, there's a new node option in, I, th I think it was just introduced in 2.82. Is that what we're on? Um, that really helps with the variation. Um, I'll show you that in just a moment. So yeah, pretty much. Yeah, should do nice. Cool. Let's see what that looks like. I'm just gonna hide everything else for a second and jump to rendered mode. And yeah, it's possible, isn't it? Cool. Okay, so let's jump over to shading. Um, get rid of our 
stupid. There we go. Good. Now, if I add in a uh, geometry node, we have a new random per island output. Yeah. And if I just jump down to that, you'll see that each one of these islands is now got a different grayscale value. That wasn't there before. It used to be back facing pointiness and that's your lot. But this has been added. Um, and yeah, I like it. So let's add in, you might have seen this te technique before, I've done it in several of my videos, or you, you may use it yourself already. Um, but adding a multiply node and an add node, and then connect up the chain of uh, like that, and then add in a hue and saturation node, and connect this to the hue. And then we're gonna feed the color into the color input, and I'm gonna take a look at the output. And you'll see what it's doing. <coughs> Excuse me. So that random per island value is giving us different hues on each of these islands, which is cool. So now if I, um, the best way to look at these is that's going to be the amount of variation, and then this will allow us to shift it up and down the the, the spectrum. Yeah. So if I change this to like something tiny, like 0.05 barely any variation at all, yeah? Um, and then as I move this up, I'm moving the whole thing up and down the color spectrum, like so. Um, in fact, 0.05 might actually work for us here, but uh, let me just try 0.01 and change this to 0.45. Nah, that's just too red. Yeah, I think 0.05 will actually be what we want. Maybe with 0 0.8, 0 0.48, sorry, on here. Um, remember we're just looking at the color map now so as I bring in the rest of the material maybe we can go a little higher idiot idiot who was sitting there thinking he hasn't connected it the moron I don't blame you Yeah, I kind of like that. It looks all right. Groovy. Right, now one problem with this particular material, which I didn't notice until after I'd set it up, was that there was no, um, what do you call it, height map, no displacement map on this one, which was a bit irritating. Um, but the gloss map basically outlines where we'd want there to be cracks and dips and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to use that with a color ramp and feed that into a displacement like so and then connect that up there cool now to if you've not used vector displacement before I'm assuming a lot of you have but just in case first you want to turn on experimental mode then you want to add in a subsurface modifier um, I actually want to grab all of that and turn on a mean crease because I don't want it actually affecting the uh, shape of it at all, just the displacement. And then we also have to go down to settings and by default displacement set to bump only. We want to change that to either displacement only or displacement and bump. Um, I'm going to use displacement only. Um, no, it really depends what you're doing. And yeah, you'll notice the displacement's possibly a tad too high, just just like a slight, slight little bit too high. So let's <laughs> let's turn that down a bit. Yeah. Now, and one problem we will get is because we have separated out these these uh, meshes, um, or made them. We cut the we uh, cut them into individual pieces uh, within the same object. Um, the displacement will now want to separate them, uh, but we can fix this with some adjustments to the mid level. So if I hit 0 0.4, 0 0.20, that can't be right. 0 0.05. Yeah, you get the idea. It's um, a case of just. In fact, it's easier to see when you turn it off and jump straight to side view, I should be able to see what it's doing and there, yeah, you can start to see what the displacement's actually doing and you can just tweak the mid value 
to get the two bits to uh, to come together again. Um, but I actually think that amount of displacement will work. It's hard to tell. I think we need to up the resolution. Even that's not helping much, is it? Maybe we can go higher with the displacement. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> That's horrible. Let me just run a quick render of just that for a second. Um, so what I want. So I don't want it to render that or that. Just that. Cool. Oh, I don't want to render it at that resolution, do I? We'll be here all night. And same as it. That'll do. Cool. Hmm. My displacement's looking a bit poop. I don't like it. Um. Let's try using the color one. Yeah, that might work better, and then flip it over so the black areas stand out a little more. And then lower the strength even more. No, I don't think we did want it flipped, because we do want those darker areas to cut in. that comes out. It can be a bit trial and error when you don't have a set displacement map. Oh yeah, that works great, Bill. Moron. <sighs> yeah, still not massively happy with that. I think the lighting's not helping it. Um, but we'll wear... Uh, Fuck you moron! You moron! No wonder we've got no geometry to work with. Idiot. Yes, in case you're wondering why I was shouting moron at myself, I hadn't turned on the adaptive subdivision. It was set to normal subdivision. Right, now we can see it. I blame you guys. You're here, you're watching. You could have you could have said yo Bill, you're an idiot, but you didn't. No, it's my fault, I know. Okay, so we've got some adaptive displacement now, and um, we can start to see what it's doing. Still can't believe I was that much of an idiot. In fact, yes, I can. I can believe it all too well. God, it looks like some sort of like dirty, mossy bark or something now, doesn't it? That's disgusting. Okay, so we want to go really low on this. In fact, what we might want to do. No, actually, that's looking quite good. I think we want to exaggerate the uh, the cracks. So I'm actually going to turn off the displacement for a second. Or disconnect it, I should say. Come on. Thank you. Um, and then from this map, I can bring down the white value, change it to a sort of a 0.5 which is like the mid-level for displacement. And then we're only going to be getting the the cracks, so to speak. Which should, I think, help this stand out a bit more. Yeah, let's try something like that. It's thinking about it. Maybe up the strength a little. Oh no, not, not that much. That's going to be horrendous. I told you. And yeah, it's starting to look a bit more interesting now. Again, some more tweaking to be done, but that's always the case. 
So let's bring back our glass. Um, at this stage, I'm actually going to um, name a few items just to keep things nice and tidy. So this is going to be our pint glass, obviously. This is our table. Just think it is a table. It's a or the counter, I suppose, but whatever. Um, and back plate. Cool. Right, that's took us up to uh, yeah, ten to eight. Um, I think you'll probably agree not the most successful uh, first attempt at streaming, but hopefully this will get a bit better um, in future versions. <laughs> uh, for tomorrow as well, I'll try and make sure that I'm a bit more uh, have a bit more of a plan of exactly what what I want to cover in that particular episode, make it a bit more structured. This one, I kind of winged it. I was hoping it would just magically come to me, but um, it's left me kind of... Um, yeah, it's left it very disorganised and not particularly entertaining to watch, I'm sure. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully I'll improve tomorrow. But thank you very much, for those of you who tuned in. Uh, have a nice night and stay healthy. <laughs>